Oregon voters legalized marijuana for medicinal use in 1998. It's up to patients to grow their own marijuana or find someone to do it for them. Demand for the drug has grown as the number of Oregon medical marijuana patients has skyrocketed. Today, there are more than 100 farms in Oregon serving more than 10 patients. The biggest is James Bowman's High Hopes Farm in rural Jackson County. Here, farmhands work to the sounds of industrial metal music blasting from a nearby boombox. Well, this week is planting week. This is where we've taken all of our seedlings and our cuttings and we've grown them up to the point where they're ready to go in the ground. We're a medical cannabis business. We're a farm. Our main focus is to provide for our patients. We do contracts with each one and we provide their medicinal cannabis for them for the year. My name is James Bowman. I'm the owner and operator of the Hyopes Farm. I am a OMMP patient. I'm also a grower for three others, and I'm also a caregiver for over 100 people. We provide the service of, of, of growing and processing medical cannabis and cannabis products for other OMMP patients. And we take this job very seriously, and. We really are a big advocate for this plant and for uh, what it can do for people. Pot farms require workers, but by law, growers can only be reimbursed for the cost of supplies and utilities, not labor. Bowman pays his 68 workers in marijuana, a practice police and prosecutors say is illegal. He says this system is impractical and that he'd rather give them paychecks. In Oregon, they don't allow us to charge for labor, and you know we think that that handicaps us. If our challenge is to provide for as many people as we can and to provide as many services for those people as we can, then the challenge is how can we do this so that we can make a legal living, so we can pay taxes, so that we don't have to wonder how to interpret the law. You know, most people in their everyday life don't have to spend, you know, time on every single decision in their business and personal lives based on how the courts might interpret that you know all right well thank you james thank right, you very much yes yeah, thanks, thanks for waiting for me sorry you, bet, kind of caught it and done. you know we want to share this with people but we want to do it in a way that that just doesn't leave us out in the cold you know we believe that we deserve to be you know paid for our you know what we do and right now there's this gray area but we feel like if we keep doing a good job that no one's really going to begrudge us a living and you know and in america you know, at least the myth that's told to everyone is that if you work hard and you, you put your efforts into to a good endeavor, that you deserve the profits of your labor. You deserve that. And so we feel we deserve that as well. For now, Bowman's business strategy is a risky one. Last year, federal agents raided a handful of large-scale medical marijuana operations in Jackson County. Bowman knows he's taking a chance growing so much pot, but he said marijuana is worth it. Do we understand the risk? Yes. Are we ready for a potential arrest or a, a raid every day? Yes. Every night I go to bed, I, you know, I think, well, this was a great day, and you know, this might be the last day we do this. And after 10 years, I'm starting to kind of, you know, the fear is diluting a little bit, but it's still an awareness of this risk. Are you hiding in with the girls? For me, I can't very well tell people to stand up if I'm not willing to stand up first. So, you know, that's what we're doing here. We're standing up. They don't want us to do it. Like I said, a phone call from the governor or from the head of OHA would probably take us right out. If, if they said, look, we can't protect you and the feds are coming to get you, then we're down. We're not trying to go to federal prison. We're not trying to divert the system. We're not trying to circumvent. We're trying to make a bad, a, a system that's clunky and outdated work.